What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Super Game Time, I'm your host Superman and today's game is Bloodborne. You know when it comes to Bloodborne, I've kind of got a love-hate relationship with it at the moment. I absolutely love this game and I can't stress that enough, it's gorgeous, it's a lot of fun to play but it has its moments and what I mean by that is what you're going to see is that it, at, at times it can be incredibly frustrating to play this game. Now mind you I haven't really played a lot of Demon Souls or Dark Souls or anything like that really. I tried to play Dark Souls at a time and I didn't really get far in it as well mainly because I just with school I didn't get a chance to kind of stick to it you know. But I decided to go ahead and play Bloodborne. I got this game actually when it, when it released and I thought, you know, every there's so much hype behind this game that I'm going to go ahead and purchase it and see how it goes. So I purchased it and I've been playing it for a while. Um, I actually, I started this probably like a few weeks ago. That's what I mean. With school and just with a whole backlog uh, catalog of games that I just still have to play. I never really got the chance until I actually made a video a few days ago uh, looking into the Looking into the Bloodborne and Faust connection. Now, I say Faust before I was saying Faust, and if you watch the videos, hear me say Faust, I had no absolutely no idea. But you live and learn, and uh, I guess a lot of you guys kind of called me out on that, which is all right, you know, I appreciate it. So, anyways, back to Bloodborne here. I actually haven't even made it that far. I, for the well, when I was like first starting off playing this game, I had no idea that you could lock on. I really had no idea what I was doing. Um, it's yeah, it's it's one of those games that takes a long time to get into, and it is it's pretty difficult when you start off, right? So that that's my take on it in the beginning. Now, what I'm currently trying to do is go and defeat the cleric beast, which is the first boss. Well, yeah, the first main boss of the game. And the current problem that I have right now is I'm looking for Molotov cocktails. I can go purchase those, but in order to do that, I need to get some blood echoes. And so what I have to do is just kill a whole lot of enemies. And so what I'm going to do is just that. Kill a couple of these guys, get some echoes, and we'll be good. So right now as you can see I'm locking on enemies it makes combat a whole lot easier you can just move around back and forth and I clearly just got hit right there but you kind of get what I'm, what I'm going with here so there should be an enemy coming down around here or he's already moved on which is perfect for us but my main goal is so I'm sitting about 452 blood echoes echoes in the right hand corner there as you can see what I want to do is get as much as I can and then go into the hunter's dream which is a special little world you can get into. The pros and cons of it, the pros of being in the hunter's dream is that nothing really happens to you while you're there. It's like a safe haven. You can customize your weapons and do all this great stuff. Purchase items and yeah. So. The goal is get as many blood echoes as I can, go purchase some Molotov cocktails. And the reason behind that is when I go off to go fight the Cleric Beast, it definitely helps me a lot. You know, again, getting used to this game, it's not something that I'm I'm terribly great at. I've seen some great Let's Plays or playthroughs of it. One of the best out there I would r highly recommend is Epic Name Bro. I have probably gone back to this guy's videos a ton of times. And they really help me out each and every time I do go. So check that out if you're just getting into Bloodborne yourself. Otherwise, you can just watch me go around, slay some enemies here and there. We're sitting at 692. Right now, we're going to use uh, our Blood Vial. So, oh, god damn. That's one thing you guys will probably find out. A lot of moments, it's just random enemies come out of nowhere. Um... Yeah, so I'm liking that I have about 740 there. So I'm going to sprint all the way back. 
and kind of go off to the next area, slay some enemies, pick up what I can. I don't want to go fight that mob. Half the time I do go and fight that mob, I kind of end up dying. Uh, as we scale this ladder here and go up. Okay, so I already have the left side, this gate right here opened up from before. That's another great part um, of this game, which kind of really helps out. And like I said, you get that love-hate relationship with this game, right? You die so many times that you end up coming back to the Hunter's Dream, and then, or you start off here in this area, which uh, you activated this lamppost, right? If you didn't open these gates up or get very far and you say died by the mob or whatever you were, you pretty much start here again and you gotta go through all that. Well, I finally made it across, got through got through a little bit of it, and because I was able to open that gate, I am where I am right now. So, that helps me a lot, because now I can get to the Cleric Beast a whole lot easier. So, as you guys can see, I've been using mainly my primary weapon. My secondary weapon is my gun, and we're going to go ahead and switch that out for the torch that I'm also carrying, which will help me in this area. Ooh, what was that? Something was glowing. Never mind. Alright, so I see an enemy right there. Simple enough. Go up to him. We'll use our flame. And I probably should have dodged, but whatever. Screw it. Shit happens. And he has some blood vials. He has one blood vial. Perfect for us. Max I can carry at the moment is 20, which I don't really mind. We kill a guy in a wheelchair right here. He gives us some bullets, but uh, we don't really need them. I'm sitting at a max number of them. I didn't expect this before, but I'll go ahead and pick that up. When the hunt began, the healing church left us, blocking the great bridge to Cathedral Ward as old Yarnum burned to the ground that moonlit night. So I, we can find these little notes hidden here and there kind of explains the lore behind the game. Shout out to everyone else that is going through the lore of the game and trying to piece together what they can find. That's pretty cool. Oh shit. Uh, one hit wonder. And we got another guy right here, always. And he... I don't really like these guys. Actually, not these guys. There's another guy. He kind of comes running at you, I think with like two blades or something like that. These guys are okay. The worst are those pitchfork guys. Anyways, there's going to be another guy right here. This is going to be our final sort of uh, enemy that we're going to kill on this bridge. And I'll execute him in beautiful fashion with that move. And that's good enough for me. Now hopefully there's no werewolves that come running at me because there are some werewolves on that, on that bridge there. But I'm gonna actually just trek back all the way back. If I head down actually that way over there, you guys, I'll just give you guys a quick look. While I'm at it, there's some trolls over there. We don't want to fight those guys at all. Actually, I don't want to fight those guys to be honest. But I have, I'm sitting at about, yeah, 1048 blood echoes. So that's a great time for me to trek my way back and head on in to the Hunter's Dream. And so this is the Hunter's Dream. This is the world I was talking to you guys about before. It's a little safe haven for hunters. This is Doll. She helps us out and all that great stuff. But we're gonna go ahead to go to the Bath Messenger, purchase some items. I need these Molotov cocktails right here. So I can purchase Five. Now that'll help me out. Um, and if I say take three, well, let's just go with five. See how that is. I could repair my items as well. The great thing about Bloodborne, and I'm sure this is a part of any other Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls, Demon Souls, all those Souls games, is that the weapons that you have, they have individual stats. Currently, I'm sitting at 185 durability, which isn't too bad at all. Um, that'll be enough for me to go ahead and fight the Cleric Beast. The only problem I have with the Cleric Beast is it's kind of difficult. It's kind of difficult when this guy attacks me. So running in here, this is Garman. 
He is the first hunter. He's kind of like your counselor and he helps you out. But we're going to head all the way back now. So we got what we came for. And let's go back to Central Yarnum. Okay, so we landed back in Central Yarnum. And I'm going to head down just this way. As you can see, our enemy friend over here has returned. And that isn't a problem at all. We'll just go ahead and kill him. And that'll be good enough. Wanted to give him that little execution, but whatever, shit happens. We're going to go through here again. You're going to see the same enemies are back that we killed before. Just give you a little run through so we know this guy was here. Target him. Go to the side. Kill him. Simple enough. Next we go to the guy in the wheelchair. Target him. And just kill him. Really easy. Pick up any bullets that we need, but we don't need those. Actually, I should have probably kept that there. I just sort of left it. Whatever, we'll go on ahead. There's going to be a guy over here. He's in the left corner. Let's go ahead and target him. He's having some problems. He comes out. So we kill him. Next guy over here. He's definitely hiding. We can just go ahead and kill him. Simple enough. And done. So now we can go ahead and equip our gun. I like using this thing, to be honest. The Hunter Pistol. Some people like using the Blunderbuss, I'm sure. Because at the beginning you're able to choose what weapon you'd like. And it's relatively easy. Uh, I don't want to cause too much of a scene. You see, those are the werewolves right over there. And that would be a little problematic for us, so we're going to just slowly walk our way over here and if you guys take a look in that corner over there we're gonna have what I think is a troll at least I'm sure it's a troll so we're gonna equip our Molotov cocktails and I'm gonna just target him and I'm gonna toss one hit him toss another hit him there he comes at me and I'll just do that and kill him. Simple enough. That's one of the reasons that I liked having the Molotov cocktails. I didn't want to have to kind of use up too much really of uh, like say I got hit. I didn't want to do that and then end up using a blood vial or whatever to kill him even though he dropped four and I really wasn't aware of that but eh. So here is the part. This is where I fight the cleric beast. This little mist thing shows that I've faced him. I've actually faced him twice and I haven't been successful, but ho hopefully I'll be successful now. We're going to give it a try. If I'm not successful, well, in the future, I'm going to keep trying. And that's one of the beautiful things about Bloodborne is just you keep trying and trying. And if you fail, you try again. And it's, it's a very interesting experience. You don't necessarily get tired of it. If you do get tired of it, you put it down. You go look at some walkthroughs. You go look at Epic Name Bros videos. And then you come back. And truly right now I'm enjoying it. So let's traverse the Nightmare Fog. Here is our good friend. And I'm going to toss that at him. Hopefully he doesn't hit me. We'll get our blood echoes that were there from the last time I faced him. And I'm going to take out his legs as best as I can. The thing about this guy is he really hits you. So if you don't dodge, I got to use him. I got to use my blood vial and move out of the way and take out his legs as best as I can and as quickly. So let that heal up. Uh, he's gonna attack me. I should probably draw him closer to the bridge, which I've heard some people say, but heat of the moment, it can get really, really tough. Let's keep gnawing at his legs here. I could hit him with my special R2 button, but it's not just, it's not that easy. I'm not, I'm not quite used to it. Some people are absolutely amazing at this. I will hit him with one of these. That should be able to do that. And 
and he's okay so he's having his moments we're just gonna keep moving around him he's gonna try to attack me here with whatever the hell he's trying to do okay keeping an eye on my health looking fairly well we've almost defeated him this is actually pretty amazing guys I'm pretty pumped up right now it's a little too early to celebrate we haven't defeated him but oh lord I think I'm about to do it it this is I am oh my oh my god you guys you guys can't uh, my camera's not on me today but my heart is racing that it's such a great feeling <laughs> oh yeah okay take a minute here I'm gonna light this lamp wow that's that's it's a great feeling to finally get this far it's just a sign of your progress, I guess. Anyways, search this guy's body, find some stuff that we need. Wow, I only had to use one blood vial, which is pretty amazing to me. Huh. I do a whole lot better while I'm talking to you guys. Well, so we beat the Cleric Beast. And I actually have not looked into how far I gotta go. I... <laughs> I'm not too sure which way I gotta go. So light the lit the lamp. Ah yes, okay, so I do remember back when I was playing this last before I made it my way to the cleric beast. I have to go across the bridge and to the left or to the right, sorry, because it was the left before when I walked in. So I have to go past those wolves and to the right and then we're going to drop down into the sewers or whatever the heck it is. And I'm actually going to do that off the video just because to be honest guys I haven't done it. And I think I'm going to head back to the hunter's dream and just repair my weapons for the time being because I have well, 5264 blood echoes and I don't want to lose those if you guys play this game or uh, you're playing it right now, I'm sure you can understand my frustration when you die and you lose all your blood echoes. Anyways, this has been a Super Game Pan video. Once again, it's your boy Superman here. You can catch a new Super Game Times video every Wednesday. I'm going to try to play a new game. It can be games from the past, on past consoles, from any any generation that I currently have, starting from the starting from the NES. But every Wednesday, every morning, that's 8, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I'm sure about three hours earlier on the East Coast. I'll catch you guys next week. And I'm going to keep playing this game. Once again, happy gaming. And I'll see you guys soon.